All right, welcome to Train Signal. You're watching the Direct Access Concept video where we're going to talk about having a VPN without the VPN. That's really what Direct Access boils down to. So well, we're going to start off by talking about um, what is this again? I'm going to give you the lowdown in terms of what are the advantages for Direct Access for your users and what are the advantages for you as the administrator. So we'll hit both sides of that. Then I'm going to talk to you about what you will need to build a direct access setup, at least some of the components. I mean, every direct access setup is going to be uh, tailored individually, but I'll tell you about the primary components that you're obviously going to need for this to happen. Then I'm also going to tell you one of the primary secrets behind direct access that might make you want to go out and implement it tomorrow. <laughs> now, the good news is, is if you do want to go out and implement it tomorrow. Microsoft has provided a step-by-step -step guide for it. Just go over to Microsoft.com, type in Direct Access step-by-step, -step, and it'll pop right up for you. But there is something very, very cool about Direct Access that will make your life a little bit easier in terms of implementation. So let's go ahead and get into our uh, session here. Uh, so what is this again? What is the deal with Direct Access, if you haven't heard so far? Here's the thing. Direct access provides you with VPN access, virtual private network access, without having to have a VPN. Now, so there's a lot of folks who uh, VPNs drive them up a wall. And so what Microsoft wanted to do is provide a solution that was native to Server 2008 R2 and Windows 7 that wouldn't require extra hardware. Uh, at, least at, at least what we should say, at least additional VPN hardware. They wanted to be able to do it just inside of Server 2008 R2. And that's exactly what they got. With direct access, what we can do is we can set up a user's machine so that they can have access to all their usual stuff on the corporate network over standard internet connections from more or less anywhere in the world. So that's super keen from the user standpoint. When a user connects to an internet connection, say in a Starbucks or a Panera Bread or wherever they may be, all the corporate resources show up as native elements of the machine, just like as if they were sitting at the corporate headquarters. Now, of course, the speed is going to be, you know, questionable depending upon what their speed of the connection is and all that good stuff. But nevertheless, they're going to have a very easy experience accessing stuff back on the corporate network pretty much anywhere in the world. And they're not going to have to mess around with logging in into a VPN. Now, the advantage for us as administrators, here's something that kind of shocked me when I first heard it. Administrators can actually push updates and group policy updates out to machines even though they're not logged into the network. I, you know, gasp, literally. <laughs> it's like, how does that work? But I'm going to tell you what makes this work and what creates this possibility here in just a second. So we have two sets of advantages. We have the advantage of users having a very easy experience connecting back to the stuff that they need. And for administrators, very easy experience pushing down updates and or group policy updates to a machine without the machine having to be logged into the network necessarily. Now, they do have to be connected to the Internet. Okay? That's kind of a no-brainer, right? But they don't have to be logged in or connected to the network necessarily. Now, let me tell you what are some of the components that make all of this stuff work. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a Server 2008 R2 machine for use as a direct access server. So I know that's kind of, you know, blinding flash of the obvious. Uh, another blinding flash of the obvious here is you're going to need Windows 7 running on all of your mobile machines, all of your laptops. You're going to need Windows 7 running on those. This, at, at least at the time of this writing, this feature is not available with Windows Vista. You must have Windows 7. Of course, that'll probably change. You know, Microsoft always comes up with new plugins for backwards compatibility for older operating systems. Now, you also will need at least one domain controller and a DNS machine. Uh, I know that's another blinding flash the obvious. We just got them all over here. <laughs> Man, we won't be able to see. We've been so blinded by the time this video is up. Uh, you, you'll need it running either Server 2008 R2 or... Server 2008 Service Pack 2. You don't absolutely need R2 for this particular component, so if you have a slightly older operating system on there, that's fine on your DC and DNS server. But if it is just 2008, you'll need to install Service Pack 2. 
All right, you're going to also need a PKI infrastructure. You're going to need at least some kind of certificate services uh, machine running in your network. And I only put down here a PKI infrastructure because there's a lot of different ways you could put a PKI infrastructure together. It might be only one server. It might be multiple servers. You know, depending upon what the rest of your network requires, you know, is going to determine what your PKI infrastructure is going to be. Now, certificate services is going to help us provide two key components for having direct access actually work. First of all, IPsec. Okay, in order to have IPsec, you need to have certificate services running and you need to have certificates, right? Yep. We're also going to utilize IP version 6 in this whole mess. Now, some of you are like, oh man, I've been pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. I don't want to go to IP version 6. I understand your hesitancy. I do. But <laughs> if you want to implement direct access, you're going to have to dip into IP version 6 at least a little bit. Now, you don't have to have a complete IP version 6 infrastructure. You can use transitional technologies like 6 to 4 or Teredo in order to provide the transitional technology until the whole world goes to IP version 6 because it will happen eventually. Just so you know, it's going to happen someday, sometime. We don't know when, we don't know where, but it will. In the meantime, there are transitional technologies that are available so that you can actually have IP version 6 running in your network enough so that direct access will work. Okay? But when we put IP version 6 together with IPsec and certificate services, that actually allows us to use a tunneling technology, a tunneling protocol to provide access to our resources over on the corporate network. And we don't have to have a whole lot of VPN hardware. It's one of those things that was designed to just work. Now, the setup for it is complex. I'm not going to kid you. And in this particular video, I'm not going to set up a whole direct access video. This is just a concept video. I just want to make sure that you know what it is and what it can do and what you need for it. But let me tell you about really the secret behind direct access. Now, one of the secrets is, of, is of course, using IP version 6 IP second certificate services, and by the way, it does work with smart cards. I know it's probably on your mind too. But another secret that you will want to know is that, and I think this is kind of the biggest secret, and it's something that is going to make direct access very, very appealing to a lot of people is that it works through port 443 across the network. That's right, HTTPS, your SSL port. What does that mean? That means that you don't have to do anything weird with your firewalls, right? It's because we're connecting via port 443. That's really going to make a huge difference in terms of being able to more or less connect from anywhere. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and let's talk and let's wrap up this particular video and really this series uh, with just a couple of bits about what you should know about direct access after watching this video. You should be able to describe the basic functions of direct access, having a VPN without the VPN hardware and the whole mess of that. You should be able to describe the basic requirements of direct access and also be able to talk about at least one of the secrets behind direct access. And my preference is that uh, you know that direct access can work over port 443, that good old SSL HTTPS port, and that's what's going to make a whole lot of stuff easy we don't have to jump through a lot of weird firewall hoops in order to make this work. All right, so that wraps up this short little video to give you a quickie overview of direct access. I'm Coach Culbertson. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.